There are a few different ways to get to the Bounce dialog box. You can go to the File menu and choose Bounce, Project or Section. You can Command B, or in the Mix window, you have this little button over here, BNC, that will take you to the Bounce dialog box. So there are a lot of options here. Let's go through them. We'll start here in the destination box in the upper left. So you might think destination would refer to where you're storing this file. And we'll get to that in a little while. Right now we're choosing the type of file that we're going to create when we bounce. So the first one, PCM, stands for Pulse Code Modulation. And it's an uncompressed file. So over on the right, we see that we have three choices, AIF, WAVE, and CAF, which is a core audio file. Each of these is an uncompressed file. So below that, we have three choices for resolution, 8, 16, and 24. You'll probably want 24, unless you're making sound for a game or some scenario where file size is critical. So for sample rate, we have an astonishing number of choices. And most of the time, we use 44, 1, and 48. We talked about this earlier in digital audio. For file type, we generally want interleaved because that's when the left and the right are glued together. Split will give you two separate mono files, a left and a right. And usually the only time you want that is when you know you're going right to Pro Tools and your stereo file will be split into mono anyway. Dithering. We use dithering when we're moving from a high resolution to a lower resolution and we purposely introduced some noise to mask that conversion. And I think dithering was important when the analog to digital converters were not as good as they are now. Should you use it? Well, I'll give you a challenge. Someday when you have some time, bounce something that you created as a 24-bit to a 16-bit and try the three types of dithering that are offered here. And then compare them. Compare them with no dithering and see if you notice a distinct difference. So under dithering is a box that lets you add to the project. I highly recommend that you bounce your track and add it back into your session as part of the archive process. It's the simplest and most obvious place to store your bounce. So let's go from there to the lower left-hand corner. We're kind of going clockwise around this menu. Normalize. Normalize will let you make up for any shortfall in your overall volume. It'll take the loudest thing in your mix and increase the gain so that it's as loud as it should be. And it will bring up everything else, including the background noise. Hopefully we've done our mix properly and we don't need to normalize because we've already set our levels appropriately. But it's there for those times when you're in a hurry and you just want to maximize or optimize or normalize your volume. Audio tail. Let's say that your track ends with a big pow if you don't set your in and out levels properly, which we'll get to in a second, you might cut off that last little chunk of your audio. So audio tail, Logic will look at where the sound actually ends with any reverbs or delays that you added and include enough time to let everything ring out. So I think most of us actually prefer to manually perform those fades, but this is another good shortcut if you're in a hurry. Real-time versus online. A real-time bounce takes as long as the track. A three-minute song takes three minutes. Five-minute song takes five minutes. The argument for real-time is that it gives you one last chance to listen as you're actually making the bounce. Call it quality control. Offline means Logic will scan through the song and make the bounce as fast as it can. You won't get to hear it as it does this. And the argument for offline is, you know, I really don't need to listen one more time. I've been listening for hours now. I think I'm good. So there was some chatter on the chat boards about offline bounces not being as authentic as real-time bounces. That's another good project someday when you have some time. Do a real-time bounce, do an offline bounce, compare them, see if you notice a distinct difference. All right, start and end. This is really important. Now, it's pretty obvious. Why would I even cover it? Well, I'll show you. I'm going to start at 1 and end at, I think, 13 is the end of my piece. Let's just go out to 15, just to be safe. And let's say that I start to bounce, and I'm doing it in real time, and I hear something at bar 7. In fact, there is actually something 
around bar seven that's bothering me in that little synth part. So let's say I've actually done the bounce and I'm in the middle of it and I hear something and I go, ah, darn, right? And so then I cancel out of it. I go back to the main window. I fix the piece because it's at bar seven, right? And I go in here at bar seven and I work around here and then I fix it. It's good and I'm good to go. I command B again and look what happened to my nice one and 13 or 15 that I set. They're gone. They've been reset. That's why I'm covering it because I've done this more than once. I fixed the part. I'm ready to bounce. I go back here. I hit bounce. And now I'm only bouncing the little section that I was just fixing. Learn from my mistake and be sure that your start and end are really what you want before you hit bounce. Now, this is always measured in bars and beats. If you're working in advertising and you want to have your bounce be exactly 30 seconds, like 900 simpty frames, and you're still going to have to measure it in bars and beats. So now we're back up to the destination window. And we're not going to spend as much time on these other choices as we did on all these. My guess is you're probably familiar with MP3s and the various bit rates. And do you want joint stereo or normal? You have the same choices down here. You're probably familiar with bit rates from iTunes, other programs that you use. One really cool thing in Logic is you can make more than one bounce at a time. You set your parameters for this one, set your parameters for this one. I think we'll skip this one, but we'll do this one. And you can do all three of these at the same time. So let's just do a PCM of this. Let's actually set it for bar one and then bar 15. And when everything is set, then I hit bounce. And this is interesting. The default is a folder in your logic folder called bounces. And then you give it the appropriate name. So I think that's handy because if you had checked the add to project box, you'll have a copy stored with your session. And then you'll also have a copy in this folder called bounces. Now, the one button I'm really surprised is missing here is add to iTunes. I go back to here and back to Command-B, where's that little button? Because even Pro Tools gives you that. But since your bounces are all in one place, when you hit Bounce and save to this folder, I guess that's a pretty easy import into iTunes. So once the bounce is bounced, the clients are happy, it's time to archive this project.